G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls and this week's episode uh, is probably more appropriately termed Life on Deck. Uh, I'm still working away on the deck mould of our 40 foot catamaran and uh, what you'll see me doing here is actually the templating for the H80 foam core. Now the foam core around this particular deck I anticipated would take me a week to complete. I think I ended up spending around 25 days doing the total foaming of this deck and the reason why why that is, is because there's a multiple uh, array of complex curves and shapes that needed to be considered and some of these aren't flat so this episode is going to pretty much highlight how I dealt with some of the uh, complex compound curves that I have in the deck around the windows in particular because it was a very detailed section and the important thing is that I'm aiming to get a very strong and rigid structure so I've had to follow a very defined laminate schedule uh, with regard to these window areas around the window mullions or the supports of the around the windows and, and that's such an important feature of this boat is that these are done because they are in fact structural members. Now last week I started talking about how I was going to integrate the core that you'll see behind me just here into the actual window sills and uh, and essentially it, it transpired that I was able to put these sections that I'm putting in here first, then sand them flat and then lay the other foam core, the 25 millimeter cross cut H80 foam across the top of it and then hand shape it back. Now, it's like doing about a hundred surfboards in this uh, in this period, and it, it did create quite a lot of excess work. The um, the coring of this deck is so important, and uh, and as you'll see here, there's a lot of laborious work that went into getting the shape right. So the region I was alluding to right there was this area here right in front of me where I'm showing you here. I can actually either butt join the 25 mil foam to the window sill or sand the window sill foam back and glue the foam over the top of it and then hand shape it. I chose to do the latter because it was going to give me a much better finish. And you know, it spent I spent probably a good day making sure this shape was correct. It did need to uh, to be done very, very methodically so that I ended up with a with a really nice looking uh, form. And I did it with a, a shape making jig, actually laid it over the top and tried to get as smooth and as uniform a finish as possible as this was going to be a cosmetic um, point in the boat. Now, whether I line or just simply fair and paint the underside of this deck is a matter of, um, matter of conjecture. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'm inclined to paint the saloon window mullions and uh, and around the window sills. However, I intend to line the ceiling structure. So there's a lot of things to think about going forward in this build uh, as I go forward, but certainly uh, getting in and doing this sort of work now can save me a lot of time with overhead work later on. If I can get it right now, I won't be reaching above my head as it's much easier working face down and leaning over a job than it is reaching above your head. And I think we all know exactly what that feels like. It's, uh, it's the worst possible position to have to work is above your head. <sighs> I've done some pricks of jobs in my time, but this one, this one takes a cake. Wow. So I've now completed all the way around here, sanded that flat, ready for foam. So that was my mission today. I wanted to get this piece on and that piece on but it's not going to happen. Now, continuing on with my over-engineering of the uh, the passageways or the walkways on the top of the deck, I used the 25mm foam. It called for 15 millimetres along this section here in the actual laminates, but I've put in 25mm because quite simply that's what I had. And better still, it, because it was cross-cut, it actually conformed to the shape of the... Um, of the contour really well, and I was able to then overlay that over the top of the window sills like I did in the front section. 
And this process seemed to simplify a lot of the hand shaping. It sort of made it easy just to, to sand one edge down rather than having to sand both edges to, to match and then fill with bog. I, I believe that I got a far less resin content by doing it this way. I've just had an hour long discussion with John. Um, it's taken us a bit of time to work this out. We've got a pretty complicated curve here to deal with and the problem with it is is that i can put in some grid scored foam here but the reality is i'm going to end up with a lot of voids in the uh, bedding compound that means i've got to have a lot more resin which is reasonably brittle i'm going to try to keep the resin content down as minimally as possible although it's very light i don't want to have bog in between the foam core um, so we went through a whole range of different options we can use this uh, scrimmed grid score 30 mil foam to sort of take the place of the curve and and that's all well and good but the problem is and I'll show you here what I mean um, down in here I have some very big voids uh, which mean that that's going to be a lot of extra resin which is again a brittle point um, although it's going to be laminated over and, and probably triple thickness over this area here and there's window mullions and, and this particular part is in fact cosmetic uh, from the inside of the boat we're going to be sitting in our saloon and looking out at the windows and seeing this rough as gut section here that we uh, we couldn't be bothered doing right so what I've chosen to do um, rather than use this grid scored foam uh, is to continue using this and this is the stuff that I've pretty much been using the H80 I've been using all the way across the bridge deck um, but I'm going to cut it into strips and strip it and cut an angle you can see there the edge actually has an angle on it and thereby almost eliminating the void and then cut a second strip with another angle on it and virtually eliminate the void here and then possibly a third one and that gets me to a very very nice um, radius and in fact it's almost perfect height it, it'll need a little bit of sanding but it can be done just with an orbital uh, and probably even just with a block I could sand this back and would be well worth it because this is one of the major cosmetic parts. It's when you're sitting down, it's at your eye level, and as you're looking out to see, you don't want to see an irregular curve in this area here, and this is going to be uh, probably fed and painted once it's all finished. So I do want to make sure that it's as, as dead accurate as possible um, before moving forward, and it's going to take a lot of work to strip this, but basically I'm stripping this this corner here, it's the only area that really needs it in the whole boat, but it does need to be done. Um, and it's, yeah, it's added a lot of work, but it's certainly got a couple of days work to do this, but it'll be worth it in the long run, I think. So that's my plan um, at this stage. I think if I continue to strip it, and then I can just add flat foam for this flat face here, and it's only gonna be a strip of about, you know, 50 mil wide to integrate it into that window insert and then um, and then finish it like I've done down here. Now I did everything I could to try to avoid stripping foam but it brought back bad memories of all of the plugs and moulds that I've shaped over the years where I've had to use wood and foam and bits of bog to try to get these complex shapes but uh, it made a big difference to the actual contour that I got and I ended up with a very strong and very resin uh, reduced um, shape here it was it was a messy job there's nothing neat about this job but ultimately at the end of when you finish stripping this a simple wipe over with a rag and got to get rid of all the excess uh, excess sea light really revealed the shape that I was after it did take some subsequent sanding a bit later on and I'll show you how I did that uh, possibly next week it was uh, it was a bit of an effort but you know it's well worth taking the time to get this right I could easily have just used the grid score bogged it in and, uh, and I'm sure it is done around the world like that, but uh, it wasn't gonna be good enough for me. I'm just trying to get the most rigid structure I can get without too much filler.
as per the plans that uh, Oceanic Yacht Design have given me with the specifications for the coach house, the window mullions, which are these sort of areas along here in between the window insets, need to have a particular layup. And, and the reason why that is is because there's a lot of pressure pushing down on that narrower section. So it's about eight layers of solid glass there with a 20 mil foam core. Now, the advantage of that is that the quadraxial actually gives me all that 0, 90, 45, 45 reinforcement in this area here. Now, it's also pertinent to note that the entire coach house that I'm standing on here has no support underneath it. Obviously, there's no mast post penetrating this area here. So the window mullion down here through the center and this one over on the side here needs to be exactly the same with a 20 mil H80 foam. So important that these get done. That's why I've stopped the foam there. I need to then reinforce all of these sections before I can uh, continue on with the foam. I'm gonna set myself up right now for a laminating session where I just do the window millions and then hopefully when they're done, they shouldn't take me too long. Um, I'm gonna get in and finish this area all the way down into here. And similarly over on this side here, Basically down here with 600 double bias, another layer of 300, 20 mil foam, and then another two layers, and then it'll be done. But I can't continue. I'm basically foamed everywhere I can until I get here. The other important thing that I've stopped about eight inches short with the foam, and so that I can actually overlap the, uh, the laminates. I don't want to just start a laminate where another one butt join ends. You can't do that. You really need to overlap, and I like to do it around 50 to 100 millimeters or, or five or six inches of overlap, giving me that extra strength so there's no shear point in where the join is uh, for a potential problem later on. So this is 1200 quadraxial. It's only supposed to be a thousand and forty, but I'm putting in thicker. One hard to wet out this stuff. There's two layers of this. That'll make it pretty strong. And then foam. Then foam, then another three layers on top of that. Three layers on top of foam. Wow. I suppose it's a Got to be a strong point, structure. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just supporting. When you got, you know, a 500 foot swell coming at you, <laughs> you want to be able to boat to handle it. I hope not, John. Well, you just don't know, mate. Yeah. Is that because of the thickness of the material? Yeah, well, it's four layers. I'm just soaking it. Yeah, there's already four layers here. Right. Six layers here, so there's going to be another two. So I'm beefing up this altogether. Wow. Plus, plus, plus you're putting the foam. Yeah, plus the foam, plus more of this. Wow.
Well, it's taken some working out to get this uh, whole side window mullion sort of curve region complete and it's been a bit of a battle. Now, along the top of the window, which is actually the bottom of the window, um, I'm able to put one complete 10 centimeter wide strip and I've actually uh, angled it so that it fits better into the uh, into the window insert and that'll only be a little bit of filler with some cotton flock to give it some reinforcement and then that'll be sanded flat and then there's a 10, 10 millimeter foam that'll come across the top here to intersect with that and thereby making it all sort of one piece I guess and then uh, two layers over the top and she'll be done but there'll be a lot of extra work done around this window inserts here they'll have three or four more layers and some quad over them just to give them a, a lot of strength and reinforcement they're already six layers thick now um, they're going to need a lot of layers it's almost a solid glass insert that we're aiming for there now further up here this area here can be dealt with in one piece all the way to the top there sanded back and then the 10 millimeter foam laid right along the top there so there's plenty to do and i've just done the other side as well i'm about to glue all that down and then i'll be able to work on this section here and then i can start progressing up into the back yeah it's been a bit of a battle it's actually uh, almost two weeks i've been going on the foam here that's amazing how long it takes i thought about a week to do the foam but i was you know a bit ambitious as i always am and i like to slow down and think these things through so i don't uh you know firstly waste the foam because it's so expensive and secondly you know you don't want to be wasting anything in a job like this but yeah that's uh looking good the rest of it's all pretty much tied in. I'm going to come in and give it all a good sand, the whole surface here to get rid of any of those, uh, those that dust and impurities on it, like this spot here. There's a couple of little spots here. That all needs to be sanded back and cleaned prior to laminating. 